Hi everyone, welcome back this week. So this week we get a recorded video. Now I have seen many comments with people saying that they were very healthy before COVID-19 but developed a long COVID afterward and it seems nothing is helping them. Now so in this video I want to discuss a few articles in an area that seems to be overlooked by many COVID researchers. That is what we Eat. Now, we have known for a long time that uh, what we are eating has a direct impact on our immune system. Now, we always focus on vitamins such as like vitamin D and trace elements like zinc, but what we overlooked is the microbiome in the gut. Now, in the past, I've talked about uh, butyrate produced from our gut bacteria having known anti-inflammatory effects. Now, the catch is that uh, we need the right set of bacteria and they need the right food to produce butyrate or more broadly uh, to support our immune health. Now, we've focused a lot on COVID-19 being an acute respiratory illness, but our gut microbiome is also greatly impacted by the disease. And a lot of the things that the gut bacteria is doing has a huge impact on immunity, depending on which type of microbes is present, uh, can either cause inflammation or, or having an anti-inflammatory effect. So that leads us to the main discussion of this week. What and how COVID has changed our gut microbiome in long COVID patients. And also I want to share some of my personal choices to keep my gut healthy at all time. Now, long COVID, as we know, is a type of post-acute infection syndrome. Now, while the term may be new, COVID is not the only disease that is known to cause prolonged sequelae symptoms after acute infections, and scientists are still figuring out the exact cause of long COVID, but it's likely caused by a various of mechanisms such as persistent virus, viral antigens, and systemic inflammation. Now, that could be the reason why some drugs or therapies work for some patients while some do not. Now, regardless of the exact cause, we have observed the patient's microbiomes are greatly disrupted after many acute infections. An international research team published a recent paper in Gut Microbes reporting that, that patients recovered from acute COVID had a predominant of antibiotic-resistant bacteria called Enterobacteria that compared to healthy individuals. Not only did the gut bacteria change, they also observed uh, reduced levels of short-chain fatty acids in feces. Now, these short-chain fatty acids, such as butyrate, uh, has a known anti-inflammatory effect and plays a key role in our overall immunity. The research team also showed by transplanting long COVID patients' feces in mice, the animals also started to show long COVID symptoms, and even these transplanted feces had no viruses. A study looked at the U.S. Veteran Affairs Hospital medical records also saw that COVID patients are more susceptible to bowel problems, such as constipation and bloating. A recent study published in Nature Scientific Report uh, reported that family members, including infants' gut microbiome, were also changed shortly after the pandemic started. Now, these reports are examples of how gut microbes can directly contribute to long COVID. So it is logical to target gut bacteria to treat at least some long COVID patients. Now, since there is yet a proven treatment indicated for long COVID, some studies suggest trying out natural products such as dietary polysaccharides. The new recent review article summarized how polysaccharides such as lanthanum, fucoidin, and others found in food such as mushrooms and red seaweed could help to modulate immunity. Now, previous studies have shown a type of beneficial gut bacteria 
called a bacterial disease is disrupted in post-COVID patients. The increasing eating dietary polysaccharides has been shown to potentially increase the level of beneficial gut bacteria, so to increase the production of short-chain fatty acids. Now, even for patients without long COVID, a study showed that of the 147 COVID hospitalized patients without prior GI or gastrointestinal problems, 16% reported having new digestive symptoms about 100 days after their COVID infection. Specifically, 7.5% reported abdominal pain, 6.8% reported constipation, and the remaining reported diarrhea and reported vomiting. Now, with all these studies, it is clear that long COVID patients' gut are out of balance. Now, it is important to have a well-balanced diet with less highly processed food in order to restore balance of the healthy gut bacteria. Now, certainly, we have we all have our preferred diet, right? And here, I'm not going to convince you to change what you eat overnight. Uh, I eat my favorite food, you eat your own, right? Now, one thing is pretty clear or pretty certain is that most of us don't have enough fiber in our diet, and it is pretty hard to have uh, the daily recommended value by just eating vegetables along with our meals. Uh, we simply just eat too many processed food uh, all the time. Now, fiber is important for bowel movement, <laughs> But I know that I, some people swear to me that they never eat vegetables and they say vegetables are toxic. Well, well, what do you, what do you know? And, but they never had a problem in the bathroom as well. Now, however, fiber is not just for, you know, to move your bowel, actually. They are also a type of probiotics that feeds our good gut bacteria so they can make short chain fatty acids. That is why I choose a fiber supplements on top of my daily vegetables. The fiber supplements do come in different sizes and shapes. You could get uh, fiber crackers and drinks. Now, my personal favorite is to mix fiber supplements uh, into plant-based protein shakes so that I get my fibers and proteins all in one drink. I recently started um, using this fiber product from Bellway, but there are several reasons I use them. The first, they are made from organic psyllium husk. The psyllium husk is known to increase butyrate producing bacteria in both constipated and healthy individuals significantly, and it works by retaining more water content in feces and form a bigger bulk to stimulate bowel movement as well. The psyllium husk is also highly fermented by gut bacteria as their food source. Now, second, it is really important to choose a sugar-free formulation as not to add extra sugar or add extra calories to the diet. Now, some fibers is uh, harder to take because of the taste, but Bellway does have uh, many flavors, making it taste much better than other psyllium husk products that I've used before. Now, the only catch about all fiber products is that make sure you drink plenty of water or fluid, and if you take any medications, make sure you separate that from each other, separate the fiber from the meds by at least two hours. Now, but don't use too much fibers each day as well, uh, because it could cause a lot of bloating and discomfort from the gas that is produced through the fermentation process. Now, if you want to try uh, this particular one out, mm -hmm. thanks to Bellway's sponsorship, and uh, you could use the link and the code in the description box below, Dr. Han 25 to get 25% off your first order. Now, so coming back to the main long COVID 
topic here. Now, I have recently partnered with a research company that is in Europe uh, focusing on non-drug therapies to treat uh, some COVID symptoms. Uh, so I will be discussing more aspects uh, in the upcoming videos, uh, as well as uh, other relevant COVID and health wellness topics. Now, the goal here is always is to let you to teach you live a healthier life and make informed health decisions here now at the same time i'm also very grateful for you all tuning in every week and listen to me so i hope to see you again next time and that is everything thank you very much for watching this week and for this video and take good care bye